Hi everybody, welcome aboard Sail Tales. My name is Gary. In this video, I want to talk about the standing rigging for my barrow space boats. Now the standing rigging consists of the stays and the shrouds that support the masts. I do have a favorite type of twine that I like to use for this rigging. I like three-strand twisted tarred nylon seine twine. There's several reasons that I like this twine. To start with, it's soft. It's pleasant to be around. It's also a little bit stretchy, which makes it perfect for this application. Now, it's not so stretchy. You're not going to feel it in a two or three foot long piece of the stuff. But if you tie one end onto something solid and pull back about 10 or 12 feet of it and give a pull, you'll feel a little bit of give. And this is a good thing for our standing rigging. The reason is you can set the rigging up with a little bit of tension. As everything settles, it'll still maintain a little bit of tension and it won't become slack. I also like the appearance of this twine on my boats, which are semi-scale models of vintage or traditional sailing boats. And the black twisted appearance kind of reminds one of the tarred rigging that was state of the art on sailing vessels maybe 150 years ago. The twine's easy to use for this job as well. The upper end of the twine, being soft, can be made into a loop that can simply fit around the mast. When setting up a rig, connect the stays first before connecting the shrouds. A mast can flex enough to allow a head stay to slip over the top of the mast. My schooner Annie design has a back stay and it can make use of a pelican hook to tension the stay. I love pelican hooks. They are so simple, and they let you tension a line easily and hold it there with almost no effort at all. Gaff rigs can't have backstays, so the shrouds are arranged to pull the mast back, and that helps tension the head stay. The shrouds connect to the hull sides with pelican hooks. That aluminum tubing will slide down to secure the hook. Let's talk about the pelican hooks. We'll talk more about twine later. You can make your own pelican hooks out of stainless steel wire. The wire I use is actually welding rod. It comes in 36 inch length. You can bend this wire easily enough with a pair of needle nose pliers. But I wanted to make quite a few of these hooks. and I wanted to make them quickly and have them all come out the same size and shape. So I made myself a simple jig. It's just a piece of wood with some strategically located screws sticking up. These are number six machine screws. They're screwed in from the bottom of the wood. Stand about a quarter inch tall. The other end of the wood, I have one screw standing up and a block of wood for the wire to lay against. Here, let's make a hook and I'll show you how I use this.
I use a file to round off the sharp spots on the end of the wire. And I make a little bend right at the end of the wire. That little bend at the end will discourage the aluminum collar from getting out of place while the boat is sailing. If you want to make a jig like this for yourself, first bend one hook freehand. Make sure that it fits your boat and then use it as a sample to make the jig. The aluminum tubing I use comes from the hobby shop in a 12 inch length. I cut the tubing with this tubing cutter. The tubing cutter leaves the edge of the tubing rounded in. And I fix that with a tapered punch. Just enough to straighten out that curl or maybe add just a tiny bit of flair to the end of the tubing. You can also cut this tubing with a hacksaw. To do that, I find a drill bit that just slips inside the end of the tubing. Just far enough to let me clamp the tubing in the vise without crushing it. Then I can saw through it with the hacksaw. Now we pretty quick find the hacksaw snags on the thin wall of the tubing. The way to deal with that is don't try to cut pushing the hacksaw, but drag it backwards through the tubing. I know it's the wrong way to use a saw, but it goes right through this aluminum tubing. Okay, so let's talk some more about the nylon seine twine. I've already talked about how it has a little bit of stretch to it. The braided construction line won't do that. And that's why we use the three strand line for this job. Basically, when you make up the rigging, you're going to want to form a loop in the end of the line. You can do that by laying the line back alongside itself and securing it with two or three seizings. For those seizings, I use a number four polyester whipping twine. That's something you can find in marine supply stores. Or you could use a heavy duty upholstery thread as well. I choose the white color for that just because it makes it easy for me to see what I'm doing when I put it over the black twine. When you have a seizing secured, put a drop of glue on it. Super glue, CA, make sure it stays put. Another way to form a loop in the end of the line is to do a proper eye splice. Being a three strand twine, you can do that. The tar on this twine stiffens it up just enough that you can unlay the three strands and work with them. This twine is small, so making that real eye splice is a little bit tedious. Good lighting and using a toothpick to manipulate the strands makes it a lot easier. If you haven't spliced three strand rope before, I'd suggest you practice with some other rope that's a little bit bigger. Find yourself a piece of quarter inch manila, hemp, or sisal rope and practice a splice or two with that. It's a lot easier to see what you're doing and once you've done a couple of those splices it'll be a lot easier to work with the tiny twine. Here I've made up the upper end of the shrouds and the stay. And I left the lower end of the twine extra long. 
So now I can plug the mast into the boat. So right now I brought all four shrouds down to the hull and I tied them there with just a single half hitch. I've adjusted all four so that they all have just a little bit of tension. They're all about equal. Now I'm going to go around one by one, one at a time. I'm going to take the shroud loose. I'm going to slip the aluminum collar over it so I don't forget that little guy. Bring him up here where he'll be out of our way and hold him there for the moment with a piece of tape. I'm going to use old-timey typewriter correction fluid to mark the twine. Slip the pelican hook into place. Feed the twine through the eye of the hook. Pull the twine up snug and hold it there. Now mark the end of the loop with a dab of correction fluid. I'll rely on that mark to let me finish the shroud to correct length. There is another big plus about using this three-strand twine. When you're setting up the finished rig, you can adjust the tension of each piece by twisting or untwisting the twine to make it shorter or longer. Leave a comment below. Maybe you have a tip you can share with us about rigging our boats. I put some links in the description of this video to help you find materials or learn how to do a nice place. Thanks for watching. Have fun, stay safe, pet the dogs, and be nice to ladies. Happy boat building out there.